All right, welcome to lab two. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use our graphing application, our custom graphing application. It's actually the first of multiple tutorials in which you'll learn different aspects of using the graphing tool. But in this one, we'll just focus on what you need for lab two. Now the graphing tool is separate from Skynet, it's separate from Afterglow, it's its own thing, and we built it specifically for this laboratory sequence. And using it, you should be able to meet all of your graphing needs for the remainder of the course. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here we are looking at it. To get to it, you go to this URL, skynet.unc.edu slash ASTR101L slash graph. And of course, it's also linked in the lab, and that's probably the easiest way to get to it. And when you come here, in the upper left, you'll see a drop down option, a drop down menu, different options under it. And the first option is curve, and that's for plotting a curve or for plotting multiple curves, as we'll see. And that's what we need for lab two. These other options, moon, Venus, scatter, dual, and a few more that we'll add in the weeks ahead are for the other labs, and we'll come back and deal with those separately. So we want curve for this one. And then we see there's a data table with X values and Y values, and there's a plot. And whatever we put in the data table is automatically plotted. For example, I'll come over here and maybe change one of the values and you see the curve updates automatically. Now, when you first load this, this page or any new option, you'll find generic data already in the table. And we can just delete that and replace it with the measurements that we make for that lab. And we'll get around to that in just a minute. Now, in lab two, you're gonna be, ma you're gonna be making two plots and both plots are going to have not a single curve, but four curves, one for each season. So to change the number of curves, you go over here. It's currently set to one curve, but we can go to two or three or four. And you see, when I did that, it added columns to the table, so places for you to put the data, and it added data labels, one for each curve. Now, we don't see four curves yet because we don't have any data in here. We can add data. You can see it adds a curve. And of course, that's just very random data that I just typed in. We'll delete all that and you'll enter your own measurements. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. But before we do that, let's get our title and our labels taken care of. And this is important. This is a mistake students often make. They'll enter their data, they'll save their plot, they'll submit it, and they'll lose most of the points because they forgot to give their plot a title, they forgot to label what curves what, what's on the axes and what are the units. Without that information, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook. There's no way to interpret a graph without that information. So it's important that you do this. So, title. In lab two, the first graph that you're going to make is length of day versus latitude. And normally the title just describes what is being plotted. So one axis versus another, that makes an acceptable title, length of day versus latitude. The other plot that you'll make in lab two, you're going to measure the angle of the sun above the horizon versus latitude. And maybe that's what you'll label that plot. Okay, the data labels. We have four curves, one for each season. So the first one is for the summer solstice. And you see these are labels separated by commas. I just delete what's there and type in what I want. Winter solstice. Then we have the vernal or spring equinox. And the last one is the autumnal or fall equinox. Okay. I type those in and you see up here 
uh, they updated as I was typing. Now, actually, I want to be a little bit more specific. This is not just summer solstice. This is summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. Because when it's summer solstice in the north, it's winter in the south. And in the lab, this is northern hemisphere summer solstice. I'm going to copy that and put that ahead of each label just to be a little bit more specific. Okay. What's left? The axis labels. So on the x axis, we'll put latitude. The y axis, we'll put length of day. But that's actually not sufficient. Uh, on your axis labels, you not only have to describe what they are, but you have to put units so you can interpret what these numbers are. Latitude, in the lab, we're measuring that in degrees. Length of day, we're measuring in hours. I normally put the units in parentheses. Your second plot, where you're measuring the angle of the sun above the horizon, those units are degrees. That would be your y-axis for the second plot. OK, we have our title. We have all of our labels, our data labels, our axis labels. We just have to enter the data. So for this first plot, you've made your measurements at five different latitudes. One near the Antarctic Circle. I'm just going to guess maybe it was around minus 65 degrees. Negative corresponds to the Southern Hemisphere. The second one was somewhere in the middle of the Southern Hemisphere, maybe minus 20. One was near the equator, maybe 5, 35, and then one up by the Arctic Circle. Now, your latitudes will be different. I'm just making stuff up to show you how the graphing tool works. You'll want to enter your own data. Now, the rest of this here, let's get rid of the x. We don't need that. So we have our x values. And then we're going to plot length of day. So summer solstice in the northern hemisphere the days are long, so maybe something like 19 up at the Arctic Circle, and they get shorter the closer we get to the equator. I don't know, maybe 14, maybe 12. In the southern hemisphere, when it's summer in the north, it's winter in the south, so we're talking about shorter days, maybe 9, maybe 4. Okay, so there's the first curve. Second curve is northern hemisphere winter. So short days, as we go to the equator, the days are longer. And then we have the spring equinox and the fall equinox. And these should all be around 12 days, I think you'll find. But don't just enter 12 you actually have to do the measurements and demonstrate that that's what it should be. Okay. So I've entered some data here. You'll enter your own. Your graph will look something like this. And then all you have to do is save it and then upload it into WebAssign. And we have two saving options. One is saving as a PNG, and this is a higher quality file, though it's also a larger file. I would save it as a PNG, and if it does not load up into WebAssign, then come back and save as a JPEG. That's a smaller file, just lower quality. Here, I'll show you both. I'll save the PNG, I'll save the JPEG. Here's the PNG, very nice and crisp. And here's the JPEG. And you can see it's uh, not as high quality. But if the PNG won't upload because it's too big, uh, you can always upload the JPEG as a backup. Okay, that's it for this video tutorial.